We've been reporting here this week on the violent unrest that has claimed more than 150 lives in western China. Authorities now have the place under lockdown, but they've allowed some media in for a closer look. And our own Ian Williams is there tonight. They flooded into Urumqi this morning, a massive and calculated show of force. The Chinese government determined to stifle the worst unrest this region has seen in decades. The security forces have locked down the city centre, blocking every junction. But Urumqi remains tense. <laughs> Officials say 156 people died someday in clashes involving the country's Han Chinese majority and the minority Muslim Uyghurs, who'd taken to the streets in protest against their treatment. Sporadic clashes have continued, Han Chinese mobs roaming the streets, seeking revenge. Today, the government organised a press visit to one of the city's biggest hospitals, where almost half the 800 injured have been treated. Most of those we saw here were Han Chinese, suffering from head and stab wounds. Gao Fenglian was left with a fractured skull. It was so sudden, I didn't know what was happening, she told me. They say the hospital here was overwhelmed on Sunday, but won't give any detailed breakdown of how many of the injured were Uyghurs and how many were Han Chinese. In Arumchi's main Uyghur neighborhood, residents pointed to evidence that they were the victims. They came here to kill people, this man said. Even before the violence, Urumqi was largely segregated. Now these poorer neighbourhoods are sealed off by riot police. This Uyghur shopkeeper was one of the few to open for business today. Speaking cautiously, he told me that the biggest problem is the lack of economic opportunities for the Uyghur minority. This evening the city is saturated with armed police, but the atmosphere remains tense and volatile. Ian Williams, NBC News, Urumqi.